Hello, my lovely photogs. Welcome back to another video. And today we are going to be analyzing anime to improve our photography. So if you know anything about me and my work as a photographer, you'll know that Japan and a whole bunch of different subcultures from Japan have been a very huge inspiration and influence on my life and my career as a photographer. Specifically for anime, it's been one of my biggest influences and honestly my photography wouldn't be the same without it, without my love for it. And so what I want to do in this video today is go through a little bit of an exercise and start to dissect and analyze a whole bunch of different static scenes from this anime that we're going to be watching together. And we're gonna see what we can learn. We're gonna see how we might break things down so that we can fold it into our own sphere of influences and roll that into our photography. So the anime that we're going to be watching today is called Sangats no Lion, or March Comes In Like a Lion. And this story is about this guy, Rei Kiriyama, who is one of the very few middle school students who has achieved like a pro professional status as a shogi player. Now, shogi is a, a game, a board game, very similar to chess, but a lot harder from what I've learned about shogi so far. But the anime isn't just about shogi, right? This is a slice of life anime that focuses on a lot of different themes about you know growing up and the hurdles and the setbacks and you know, the fitting in of everyday life. This is a very rich story about this one dude and how, you know, he goes about his life as a middle school professional shogi player. Super interesting. I'm not into shogi that much, but the story is just absolutely riveting. But not only that, this particular anime has some of the best art style that I've ever seen in any anime really or at least it's like my favorite and I've watched so many different anime in the past this is one of my favorites for sure and so there's a lot of inspirations and a lot of lessons I feel to be learned from a lot of the different compositional techniques that this anime uses so I wanted to you know, break those down and share those with you and go through and see if we can find any together so with that said let's just jump straight in <laughs> So in this opening scene of this episode, we have, you know, this family and this grandpa. One of the things that I love about anime in general, but this anime in particular does it really, really well is this use of like glow, right? This is, this has quickly become like my kind of trademark look where there's a lot of glowy edges around the main contrast points of this image. And in this instance, what this does is it really connects with the previous clip before it, right? Where it has this kind of like nostalgic feel amplified with like the music and you know, the, the very desaturated look of the scene. This glowy look gives a feel of nostalgia and it gives a feel of like warmth and, you know, because it takes off the edge, so to speak. Um, I do this a lot in my images and, you know, it might be something that you want to do in yours as well. But one other thing that I really enjoyed about this particular scene in this clip is the contrast. The contrast is huge in this one. You have this blinding, you know, doctor's room that he's in uh, and it, it's super, super bright. He must be behind a window and he's just backlit, right? Backlit so much that there's just shadow. And obviously he's actually in a, a proper room, right? So there would be lights, right? Um, but they intentionally made him dark and that really like makes him stand out as a silhouette and really draws your attention and your focus to him. Mm. Okay, let's pause that there. One of the things that I love about this particular anime is the art style. The art style I feel is so different to just about any other art style out there. You know, you could even be close to saying it's like, it's somewhat even watercolory. And this scene in particular that I stopped on right now doesn't really accentuate that, but maybe it will later on. 
But what I find really interesting about this scene, this set of clips, is that she's like walking through her town and she's being really nostalgic about, you know, where she was and all that kind of stuff. And every single clip in the scene is desaturated, like a lot. And this is a theme that goes on a lot in this anime. They use color really, really well, like masterfully well. In this particular scene, what I noticed is that, you know, these clips all have really desaturated looks to them. They're all establishing scenes so you know, okay, like what the neighborhood looks like and feels like. But because they are a part of her flashback, they are all desaturated and it gives you that feel of like, reminiscence right i love that so the the use of of color here is ah these guys so good i love this this as a like single static image it just it's it speaks to me um they just use a technique that I love using personally, which is breaking the rule of thirds, right? So you'll notice that this particular image isn't on a third at all, right? What happens in this image is that the third is probably like up here. It's where the tops of the skyline are, right? And she, the, the main subject of this particular scene is in the middle, but probably also in the middle of the bottom row of that nine as well. And that's interesting, right? Because it creates this like, this tension, right? There's no solidity or, you know, I guess confidence in this particular image. Instead, you have a whole bunch of this negative space up top, which is pretty much nothing. It's just like snow and gray and gradients, right? And there's not much going on, right? Um, compared to the, the bridge down the bottom and, you know, her in the middle, her in the middle is important because that anchors you down to the middle of the scene. Um, and if she was off to the left or off to the right, it wouldn't be as strong. And I feel that, you know, the offset nature of her going, you know, down in the scene is okay because she's in the middle, right? But this is something that I do in my compositions all the time is that I put subjects in the middle of the entire row of that section of nine so that it's not super unconventional or super unstructured, but it does give this, this sense of, in this instance, like how small she might feel in this given moment. So this scene is very like sad and melancholy and you know, you can tell by all the desaturated colors and all the gray and that kind of stuff as well. But because the scene is so large and she is so small and pushing her down further in the scene makes it, you know, more accentuated, right? I love that about this scene. And you'll notice that later on, we'll go through this anime, they'll probably do it again. Um, this is a device that they use all the time. And that's one of the things that I love about this. <laughs> So same kind of thing, same composition, but different subject, right? So in this instance, we have a, you know, sprawling city skyline. Uh, in the background, we have what looks like to be the Sumida River and, you know, with the bridge in the middle, but it's pushed so far down that it just gives a total complete vibe. Uh, very interesting use of composition here. Okay. One more, like last time for this particular scene, I swear. Um, but it's just, it's just so good. This scene looks like it's nothing. And that's why I love it. It's amazing, right? This particular scene, they could have done it in so many different ways. They could have pushed everything down a little bit and maybe had her at hip height, or maybe they put her somewhere else. But instead they decided to put her at shoulder height in the middle at the very bottom. Right, this, like, look at how much negative space there is here. It's insane, this amount of negative space. But what this does, it has the effect of focusing your attention on her, right? The removal of all these subjects gives you more 
direction of where to look as a viewer. And I think that's that's such a, in this instance as well, it's such a powerful compositional technique, even though it's completely unconventional, but it's also completely deliberate and intentional, which is, again, why I love it. Okay, enough from this scene, I promise. Ah, I love this. I, I love this frame. Um, because it's simple. And this is the kind of like simplicity that I try to go for in my images as well. But there's a couple of reasons why it's simple and why I like it, right? So the thing that I try and do a lot with my photography is reduce the amount of colors that are going on in any one given scene, right? I try and reduce the amount of colors to make them more analogous and make them, you know, stand out a little bit more or to make them blend in a little bit more as well. So you'll notice in the top right here of this particular scene, these shades of blue, there's like a, a deeper blue, a light blue in the sky. There's like almost a purple here. There's like a dark purple over here in these buildings, in the shadows. All of these things are very close in hue to one another, which kind of gives the effect of like, they just blend into one another, right? Like they just meld into one another. They're not important, right? And that's in and of itself important because it's the reduction of elements and the simplification of elements that makes the more important thing in this frame stand out. And the more important thing here is the subject, these two figures in the middle, right? So these two are the only ones with significant color, except for the bridge on the left. So the bridge on the left is obviously this red, right? Which pops quite hard and also is very like reminiscent of what Japan looks like, right? So, um, but the power of this is that red is a complementary color to blue and they're both on opposite sides of the composition, right? So they balance each other out from a compositional positional perspective. Not only that, the bridge itself is a leading line into the main two characters. So this one bridge does a whole bunch of visual anchoring, right? It's not a like obnoxious red. It could have been like super bright and super saturated and all that kind of stuff, in which case it would have taken prominence. Instead, it's this like, it's it's bold, but it's slightly subdued. And that gives a lot of visual hierarchy to this, this middle, right? The, this, this area to where the subject actually is. And I think that's super powerful and really, really great composition. Okay, um, one thing that's really useful in both filmmaking and in photography to tell stories is the use of multiple angles of a similar thing, right? So in this instance, what we've got here is if we go back a little bit, we've got this like, you know, I guess wide open shot and then a middle shot, right? and then a detail shot and then come back to a middle and then back into the detail shot, right? And this kind of has the effect of like giving you texture and understanding of what's going on in the actual scene in and of itself. It gives you a more like defined clarity of what you can cling on to and understand, which is really important, right? So when you're in a photography scenario and you're shooting something, let's say like a period of time and you're trying to tell the story about this thing, what I can suggest is that if you're using a series of photos, have something that's establishing, so something that's super wide, right? It tells you where you are and sets the context, but then go narrower of the same thing potentially or something that's quite, you know, related but tangential and then go further in from that and go close up, kind of like this mouth um, scene right now. But you know, in photography, you probably don't want to go that close. But what it does is having all these different levels of detail drives the story forward. It gives you more things as a viewer to anchor yourself into. It runs your imagination a little bit more efficiently. And 
you know, you'll find this a lot in really good filmmaking. Uh, but in anime, I mean, it doesn't happen that often, but this particular anime does it really well. So try to consider that when you're making series of images, what are the different, like, not only focal lengths, but actual distance and how much, you know, the subject fills the frame. How much of that variance can you put into a series or a carousel of images? <laughs> okay, uh, one thing that's actually really easy to do in photography or anything visual really is the idea of complementary colors. And I didn't actually notice this the first time I was watching it. I only just noticed it just then. But you can tell that in her, her hair, right? She's got these like two dango looking hair ties or whatever they are. Uh, and they're pink and they're green. Pink and green are like, well, red and green are like complementary colors, right? Uh, and it's interesting that they're in her hair right now. And then later on in the next clips, there's this one. It's just completely pink. And then this one's completely green. And that just provides this like real big opportunity for, you know, attention grabbing, right? So in your series of images, if, you, if you're ever doing one to tell a story, you know, having interstitial images where you can really grab your attention for someone when they're looking at your, your series of images is kind of a cool technique because, you know, they might be swiping through your carousel going one, two, three, yeah, okay, I've seen it all before, that's great, whatever. And then four, bang, right? Like you throw something in there that they don't expect that engages the attention of them a little bit more so that the rest of the carousel is just as engaging as the start of the carousel, right? So just something to consider. I think it's, re it's really interesting how they used color and complementary colors in this, in this instance, but there's a whole bunch of different ways you can do this, but um, that's just what I noticed just then. <laughs> okay, so aside from how hilarious this, this actual scene is, one thing that I noticed in it is they have the establishing shot of like where they are, which is in this bar, right? But to accentuate the last point that I made about like close-ups and, um, you know, carousels and st telling stories and that kind of stuff. In this particular instance, they what they did was just, they made a couple of scenes, close-ups, that just give you more depth, give you more texture to understanding where they are. And I think this is really important to, to realize that telling stories like this and giving people a chance to form the image of what it looks like in their own mind is a great technique to be able to more efficiently tell the story that you're trying to tell. <laughs> okay, uh, again, masterful use of uh, colors in this one. So anime, I mean, anime does this with like, you know, accentuation, right? And a little bit over the top. In this instance, you have this guy, this, this grandpa blushing, right? So you have like, you know, lines on his cheeks and they're colored pink and all that kind of stuff. And then you have the background and the background is a similar hue to the rosy cheeks. And I think that's really clever because it, it, it really ties in the entire scene to what's going on in the main subject. Just a, a small detail, but one that I noticed. <laughs> All right, so this particular image, this anime does this so, so well. Something that I strive for in my images is simplicity, clarity, intention of focus, intention of subject, right? This anime isn't scared to remove things from the frame. And I think that's super powerful. So in the middle, you have the two figures sitting under Kotatsu, but the important thing here is that there's nothing around them, right? There's there's nothing in the background, but you know that these two people are sitting inside a house. So typically in most animes, in most scenes, 
you know, you'd have them sitting on tatami mats or, you know, you would see the walls on the outside and maybe some house decorations and all that kind of stuff. But instead, what they decided to do was just remove everything so that you as a viewer look at this image and you're like, okay, I know exactly what is important here and I know what is going on. It's immediately understandable. I know who the main subject is. I know what's, you know, what's going to be proceeding and, and all that kind of stuff. And it's like so powerful uh, a device to learn in the field to be able to control what's in your compositions and remove anything that doesn't add to the main subject or the main core of the story. And this is really important and in this instance really powerful and I, I love that this anime does that. It's it's great. Oh this this is a scene that I can get behind, right? Um so very similar to the other bridge scene from earlier in the video, right now we've got this kind of really dark blue seam that is, again, really unconventional, but very anchored, right? So you have two figures in the middle up here and, you know, immediately your eye is drawn to them, right? And this is achieved through the fact that it's not on the nine for starters, right? It's in the middle of the top row of the nine, the, the rule of thirds, but that gives this gigantic negative space, this dark negative space where realistically nothing is going on, right? And that focuses your attention to the main subjects in this image. And that's super powerful. It's like, it, it's, it's really, really effective use of focus direction, right? So the thing is like, the artists could have made this composition such that the overall composition would have been down a little bit, right? They could have made it stronger in terms of its like positional elements if they moved everything down. But then if they did that, they would have this like, you know, really bright presence reflecting against the river that they're at. And that might have been distracting. You know, there would have been less negative area here. So would that have drawn your attention to the subjects quick enough or quicker? You know, there's a whole bunch of different scenarios to which like, I love the way that they've chosen to compose this particular image over, you know, any of the other options they could have chose. Uh, I also love, you know, rays and darkness and shadow and contrast and silhouettes and all that kind of stuff. That kind of like, you know, visual language pattern is like totally up my alley. And, you know, th this image in and of itself, it's simple, but it's, it, to me, it's quite stunning. Okay, so another thing coming back to the whole like feeling of nostalgia and the glowy kind of look, you know, we have this girl crying here and it's amazing because it's just this, this is so powerful, right? This particular one scene is so powerful. Not only do they use color really, really well here, you know, the purples and the teals and the dark blues, they're all analogous to one another and they all give this sense of sadness, right? Blue typically, and you know, the darker blues especially, you know, are not just a cool, relaxed, tight color, but they're also a sad, melancholy color as well. And the usage of those colors in this image is, is fantastic, right? Also, I love the, the shapes and the circles, right? They're very reminiscent of bokeh that you might find in a cityscape, for example, which is exactly where they are. But that contrasted with like the shape of her tears and the glowiness of the scene, it's like, you know, you're crying there with her almost. And I, I love how there's so much juxtaposition going on here. There's so many elements that tie together to create this feeling of sadness. And it's, yeah, it's awesome. Okay, this is a very simple scene, but there's a lot going on here. Um, so what I love about it is that there's just so many lines going on and so many frames going on and so many like, you know, opportunities for you to anchor yourself to the two subjects that are in this composition, right? So Shogi obviously lends itself to this because 
there's always two players and they're always opposing each other. There's always a board in the middle. And in this particular image, what they decided to do was, you know, make this giant doorway in the background. And not only that, put these Japanese style doors, which have these square cross patterns on them. And they just give you this effect of symmetry and balance and visual hierarchy, right? You can see all of the lines of the tatami mats lead, perspective lead into the two subjects, right? You have this overarching frame that encapsulates them together. You have, I wouldn't do this personally in my compositions, but what they've done here is they've anchored the sides of the doors here and then here leading into the character's heads, right? And I think that in and of itself is, is powerful. I would have made them probably like maybe sit in the middle of this main, uh, this main opening to frame them just a little bit better. But, you know, that's just my personal preference. And I think this is, this is done so masterfully well with personal preference that it's totally 100% fine, right? It's, it's awesome. But yeah, this is a very simple scene. And, you know, to find these types of frames in real life takes a little bit of practice, but once you start to see in frames, so to speak, you don't see the world in any other way. Like you just don't go back. So if, if there's any one like pattern, visual language pattern that I can recommend that you try to master, it's frames because frames goes with lines, goes with vanishing points, it goes with a whole bunch of different stuff. But yeah, try out frames. Nice. Okay, so this is the final image of the episode, the last scene. And what we have here is Kiriyama walking away with his dad. So the two figures walking away into the distance together. And there's a lot going on in this scene. There's, you know, a lot of visual elements and patterns that make this scene really strong. So firstly, compositionally, they're on the bottom third and they're in the middle, right? This is a very strong baseline composition for them to be in. And, in, you know, in addition to that, we have vanishing points of, you know, the rooftops of the buildings uh, and the trees create like a perspective visual line into the two subjects. That's super powerful. What I also love about this particular scene is that there's a lot of lights in the background. They're walking towards the lights. And these could have very well easily been very yellow or orange or very saturated, right? Rather, what the artists have decided to do is make them desaturated and very white, right? And this is interesting because, you know, you could have had like a very yellow versus very deep blue color contrast going on but rather they just decided for something almost white, which really accentuates the rest of the scene and for that to be blue, right? There's a lot of nighttime darkness here in this scene and a lot of like brightness of where they're walking to, almost like it's a metaphor, right? If you really wanna go into uh, the analysis portion of it. But in this way, I think this image is very strong. It's a very, solid image that has a lot of visual patterns combined together to create a certain vibe, a certain mood, and certainly the mood to end this episode. And yeah, I think that's it for this video then, now that we're at the end of the episode. This whole analysis and breakdown of anime, I think is really interesting, but I would also encourage if you're trying to learn photography and master photography well, that you do this with anything else that you know might excite you as well. So it doesn't necessarily need to be anime. It could be TV shows, it could be movies, it could be illustrations, drawing, it could be architecture, anything that has a visual aspect to it has an ability for you to dissect and to then learn from it. So if you're looking to get better at photography, I would strongly recommend that you try and dissect these things and try and find the visual patterns and try and hone your vision a little bit so that when you're out in the field, you can see these patterns in real life and then you can start to fold them into your photography as well. 
But yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to see some more. Also check me out on Instagram, on Patreon, and on Discord if you're looking to support me or join the community. I'll see you in the next video. But until then, get out there and make something that matters. Peace.